I'm Sanjeev Kohli. I come from everywhere. The Glasgow bit of everywhere. Fags, mags and bags. Where did the idea come from? It actually came from another script. So Donnie and I, who have been writing together for, my God, 22 years now. Um, I call him my writing wife because I met him three months before I met my actual wife. And um, I've been more faithful in this relationship. I'm a terrible shag about it. I shouldn't say that. Um, no, we'd written a script uh, with, I think I think it was Nina Wadi we had in mind. And the idea was that, was that it was about an Asian actress who was struggling to get work. And so... She's going to auditions, but she's also working in the DSS and doing shifts in her dad's shop. We had um, sent the script to the comedy unit and Colin Gilbert, who's the original pr producer of Bags, Mags and Bags. His favourite bit was when the, the actress goes into the shop and her dad um, says, oh, you think there's no art in shop? Look, I'm going, to, I'm going to sell you dairy milk that you don't need. And I said, well, you know, I can write about shops till the cows come home. I'd, already, I'd actually already written... Uh, a, a pilot for a thing uh, a few years earlier so yeah um, on those I think three four pages of script we managed to get commissioned for a pilot out of Radio 4 and then they commissioned the series it's very creative and you'd always feel as if you can just be free to add lines and they're so brilliant Sanjay and Donnie are so amazing at just creating things spontaneously and allowing everyone around them to feel free enough to to say the oddest things that are, which you would consider to be quite left field, and then just put them in. It's just that's what's amazing. It's you know we we do quite a lot of work because it's it's such a kind of egoless, free, creative environment. It's Donny and I have uh, the, the the amount of time we've written together. People like our stuff, really, really like it, but there's very few of them. And we, I think we just felt that we were maybe just a bit niche. Radio 4 have been brilliant in just letting us get on with it. They've let us be pretty niche and to the point where it's it, it, it's a dance that we dance, Donnie and I. Like that reference. Because Don, I mean, Donnie loves his science fiction. I love my music. And it's sometimes it's, are people going to get that reference? But the thing is, is that when they do get it, they, they feel really validated. And I think they really love actually how niche it is. They'll put it on the big 6.30 p.m. slot just before the archers. And that's when you get the haters coming out. But then also, that's when you find out, oh, it does have a mainstream audience. And we've been very gratified and surprised by the response, actually. I remember, because when we started, it was 2007. So we we weren't on Twitter or Facebook or anything at that point. I know they existed, but they were kind of in their infancy. And we'd put one series out on Radio 4. And in that year, not only did we, did we get nominated for a, a Sony, as they were then, and win the Writers Guild Award, but we got handed four pages of A4 from the, uh, the, the Radio 4 like feedback unit, full of, I'd say, 90% praise, gushing, 10%, I hate this, why is this on my t radio, too many Scottish voices. Um, and that was the moment where I thought, we've actually hit upon something here. And it's, it's lovely when your mind coincides with Many minds, and not just the guy in the room with you. Series nine is um, more of the same, really. Uh, the one w with the way that we write fags and bags, it's not an intentional thing, really, but with the, they sort of try to be standalone in that. Yeah, you might not be fully aware of the characters, but it t the plots tend to be quite, you know, self-contained. At the end of the last series, there was talk of possibly a Lindsay Wax Museum, and that's now a reality. We've got, a, we've got a new character, we've got a new butcher, because uh, sadly Sean Scanlon, um, who we adore, who played um, Mutton Jeff, he passed away a few years ago. The butcher was always a lovely, you know, cause we, we have the, the local retail associations, you've got bags, 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 you've got the pet shop, Post for Thought was Hilly, you've got um, Bra Jeff, and you have the butchers, uh, Mutton Jeff, and, 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 he, uh, and that character went. So I'd, I would like to replace him, uh, but with... Uh, kind of hipster, a kind of Instagram hipster butcher who's trying to be really pretentious about butchery. Um, so yeah, played by the brilliant Gavin Mitchell. And it's been great to bring Gav back because Gav used to play uh, Early Doors, used to play uh, Lovely Ted. Uh, and for one series, he was actually uh, Keith Futures, the psychic. So it's great to get Gav back. Gav, the hardest working man in Scottish show business. So, so he's, he's the biggest, I think he's the only new Thing. We were also introducing a tell a lie, uh, Mrs. Burkett's sister, called Thin Elizabeth Burkett. So uh, that's a lot of fun as well.
played by the brilliant Maureen Armstrong, who again, not Maureen Armstrong, Maureen Carr, who also plays Mrs. Armstrong, who was a, an early um, uh, FMB acolyte. So, yeah, bring it up, bring it back some old favourites, uh, playing new people, which is good. Yeah.